In this episode, I'll give you a guided tour of Onshape. Let's get started. Previously, I made a video explaining why I think Onshape is the best free CAD. Today, I'm gonna to assume that you've watched that, you're convinced, and you're just starting out. To make an account, we're gonna follow the links on the front page. Fill out all of the required information. And if you are signing up as a student, make sure that you use the school's email and phone number, not your own. Once you attend to the confirmation email, click the link, log in, and you'll see a screen just like this. For now, you'll only see example documents. This screen can be accessed at any time by clicking the Onshape logo at the top left of the screen. At this stage, you won't need all of the labels and folders, but they will come in handy later on. Creating a new document is straightforward. Click Create on the upper left, give your document a name and proceed. Welcome to the main interface. In the very center of the screen, we have the area where we do our geometry and we have planes for front, top and right. Think of these like pieces of paper that you can draw on to create different shapes. You'll also notice they're listed up the top here. We have an eyeball that we can click to toggle whether something is visible or not. A nice keyboard shortcut is to press the P key which will hide and show all of the planes. On the left we have the feature tree. It's empty at the moment because we've just started the document but later on everything you draw and create will be listed here which makes it very easy to edit things if we need to. Beneath that is the parts list which is once again empty at the moment but every part you create will be listed here and it's a really good idea to right click and rename them and give them meaningful names as you create them. Across the top we have the main toolbar as well as undo and redo most of the tools here are for creating 3D geometry. When we click the sketch button, as you'll see later, these buttons will change for creating 2D shapes. Down the bottom we have two tabs called Part Studio and Assembly. For this video, all we need to worry about is Part Studio. Assemblies will be covered later on. On the top right we have the View Cube. We can use the buttons to rotate the view and we can also click on the surfaces to look at that exact view. It's far easier however to use the mouse. If you use the right button, hold it down and drag, you'll be able to orbit the camera. The mouse wheel will zoom in and out. There's also keyboard shortcuts for zooming in and out, such as Z and Shift Z. Clicking down and holding the mouse wheel and then dragging will pan. A great shortcut is to press F for fit. The basics of Onshape are to start with something 2D and then use different tools to make it 3D. So for this tutorial, let's start with something super easy. We're gonna come up, click sketch, and you'll notice this box comes up here. A very common mistake that beginners make is to instantly hit the tick or the cross to close the box. Anytime you're sketching, the box must remain open. If you accidentally close it, simply double click it from the feature tree to bring it back up. Onshape is pretty good at giving us prompts on what we need to do next. You can see here we have a blue box saying select a sketch plane. We need to tell Onshape where we want to draw. You can click on existing geometry if you have flat faces, but for now we don't, so we're just going to click the top plane. I'm going to click the view cube to rotate the camera and then I'm going to use my P shortcut to hide all the planes. In this video we're only going to use the most basic drawing tools. Let's start with a circle. We click it, the next click sets the center and then we drag out and click to place the circle. Another handy tool is a three point arc. On this one we click one side, we click the end and then the third click sets how curvy it is. We're going to do a second one of those and you might be able to guess we're going to start with a smiley face. Let's use the rectangle tool, give some eyes and finally the straight line tool to do a triangular nose. Any tool can be escaped by pressing the escape key or clicking back on it to deselect it. We're going to consider this sketch finished and we're going to click the green tick to save our changes. To make it 3D we're going to use the extrude button which is probably the most common 3D function. We click on it and now we simply click the part of the geometry we would like to be 3D. It looks like nothing has happened but as we orbit the camera we'll see that some thickness has been created. We can either drag the arrow or we can type in an exact measurement. When we're done we hit the tick. Now that we have some 3D geometry some of these other tools will start to make sense. We've got things like fillet, which add a curve to the corners. Simply click what you want to be curved and then use the arrow or once again type in an exact measurement to change the geometry. When we're happy, we click the tick. 
We're now going to add a second sketch to create a crown. So we'll click on the sketch button and like we mentioned before we can actually click not only on a plane but on flat surfaces in geometry. Now we're drawing on the surface here. I'm going to spin the camera once more. We're going to use the line tool to create a really quick crown. On shape is giving us little icons to tell us what's happening. If we hover over something and then come back it'll give us a dotted line to keep things aligned. If we come up to the dimension tool by clicking on a line or even two lines we can set the distance between them or the length of things. We can also use it to set angles. All of these other buttons will apply constraints. We won't go into too much detail here but we'll give one example. Rather than dimension all three of these, if we want them to be equal, we can simply click the three of them and click the equal constraint and now they're locked together. We'll do the same for these lower ones. All of a sudden our crown is in proportion. We can drag it shorter and you'll notice all of the relationships are maintained. Once we're happy we can hit the tick and once again we're going to go to extrude. Click our geometry, change the direction and we're actually going to add a second end position here. This one's going to be very shallow so the crown sits a little bit above the head. This first one I'm trying to match here but I'm having a little bit of trouble. One of the great things about on shape is we can change it from blind which is a measurement to any of these other things. So I can say up to face and then click here where it says up to face and click on the surface and now on shape will match it. One more thing we're going to learn in this video is that anytime two things overlap it will default to add. If we want it to be a separate shape we can go to new and you can see the color changes and it's now going to produce two different shapes. There's also options you can explore for removing if you want to make a cut off the top of the head and even intersect if you want to keep the bits that overlap. We're going to leave it as new and hit the tick. To close out this tutorial we're going to explore how on shape is parametric. Say I change my mind and I do want them to be joined. I can double click on extrude 2 and then change it to add and then hit the tick and everything will update. This also applies for sketches. So say I want to come back to the very first sketch and I decide I want to set this eye to be slightly smaller or perhaps even give it a very precise dimension. I want it to be winking. I can put it in dimension here. I can put in a dimension here, hit the tick, everything goes down through the tree and updates again. This saves a lot of time if you change your mind or if your parameters change and your design has to update accordingly. Finally we're going to right click on part 1 and we're going to rename it to give it something that actually makes sense. I'm going to call this part face. And then most people watching this will probably want to 3D print or make their object. So what we're going to do is right click once again on the part go to export and put in our settings. By default will be on Parasolid but we need to change it to STL most of the time. Most software will accept text or binary so don't stress too much about that. Give it a name that you could recognize, hit OK and the file will download ready to 3D print. Congratulations you've just made your first admittedly very bad but complete on shape geometry. That's it for this time. Hopefully you've made a great start. Stay tuned for future updates. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.